Hello again, everyone. Welcome back. In this technical analysis of the stock market video, we're going to focus on the NASDAQ 100, take a look at the NDX, take a look at the Qs, and then drill in on one of the key indicators we look at every day. I know you've seen it. Everybody's been talking about it, the VIX. And then I want to look at some of the, uh, the uh, industry segments of the market and take a look at the top three performers here of the last week. And uh, we'll take a look at those. All right, so let's start off here with the side by side. The Dow was up 1,162 points. So big, big move back above the 10 week moving average, that blue line, the 10 week moving average, it's back above it. The S&P 500 up 210 points, same thing back above it. The interesting thing on both these charts and on the NDX chart is that the pivot points here on the weekly all have held so far. So we've got a whole series that is continuing of higher lows, higher highs, and this is a higher low. We did not come down and take out the May or the April low, at least as of right now. So we'll see if that continues. Same thing here on the SPX, to not take out the April low. And a pretty strong move to the upside. Over here on the NDX, up 995 points. And uh, that was the second week in a row for being an up week. And again, back above the 10 week moving average and did not break the April low. So pretty interesting. I mean, we've had a lot of divergence that's been sitting there on showing up. Now, we'll see. Do we get the follow through to the upside and continue pushing? Uh, let's dive in. And let's, let's move back and take a look at the NDX. So here's the daily on Friday up 18.37, so not very much, just a kind of a small nudge higher after the big gap up on Thursday and then the, the big the gap up on Tuesday. So um, that was Tuesday, wasn't it? Let me look at that. Yeah, that was Tuesday. <laughs> I had to double check. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then here's the, that weekly picture that we just talked about. Let's look at the LA Wave picture that I'm holding. Let's go to the weekly view. So coming off the October 22 lows, this is where I've got the count right now. OK, this this whole sequence uh, kind of puzzled me for a while, mainly because when you look at the corrective activity that happened right in here, it's much bigger than anything that happened coming off, you know, the beginning of, uh, you know, January 23. It's bigger than the other two corrective moves in this whole sequence. So it, that's what's led me as I revisited the count and how things look. I really think that we're doing one, two, three, four, completed a five wave sequence for this third wave. And I'm talking about the third minor wave of the third intermediate wave to the upside. Right now, this just continues to look and act very strong. So the way I've got this labeled, I've got a sharp pullback for wave two. I'm just not sure that this is really done with this pullback. Yeah, I pulled back into the fourth wave of one prior to of one lower degree. And you know, it is does kind of look like a zigzag when you go to a daily view in here, like right here, you could make the case that we have one, two, three down. But, you know, three down could also become a part of multiple three wave structure for a sideways triangle, or it could be three, three, five for a flat. So there could be a number of things that develop in here for the fourth wave, uh, other than just a very quick pullback, like what we got for wave two. So I'm a little skeptical that this is really done in here. So when you look at the daily, we've got one, two, and again, I've got much more detail. I go into the 130 minute time frames, the intraday time frames, and look at all the wave structures with my members. But right now, this looks to me like we've got one, two, three. I haven't seen a little fourth, and then maybe a fifth up for the first little five wave sequence, if it's going to be impulsive. OK, that's not the way I've got. I'm just I say that just because if it's going to be impulsive. So we'll see if it's going to turn out to be another bigger three wave move in here 
to kind of pair with this? Or is this going to end up being the fourth wave completely right here? It's hard to tell that right now. We don't really have divergence at the bottom. So, I mean, that's just one of the things I like to look for. You don't have to have it, but it's nice to have. Um, let's take a look. Uh, I think that's all I really wanted to talk about on the on the NDX right now. I mean, it's had a heck of a move back. I mean, let's just talk. Let me just look at what is it retraced in here of that from that high to the low on the fifth. OK, it's gone a little beyond 61.8 percent, so almost to the th two thirds retracement. Yeah, I keep a 66.7 percent, you know, level in here because two out of three is five, you know, Fibonacci numbers. So I always want to say Fib, five, <laughs> whatever, you know what I'm talking about. OK, so anyway, that's let me get rid of that. I don't need that on the screen cluttering it up. Let me go to the VIX. Let's go over here, take a look at the VIX. This spike was pretty incredible. OK, so we've just been hard down from that spike on the 5th, and it's just declined lower highs every day. And now we're all the way down here to 14.8. It was down 43 cents on Friday, down 557 for the week. Pretty incredible move when you look at these spikes. And I saw this tweet by uh, Jesse Felder. Let me just show this. OK, so he's talking, he's showing this graph that came out. I'm not sure who actually made it. Oh, Reuters put this out. And, and what they're saying is this most recent spike, the August 5th, it took seven days to return to its long-term medium of 17.6, the quickest drop from 35. And the similar revisions have gone, you know, you could see the other ones. And the next fastest to do that was uh, February of 2018. And then Christmas Eve day on 2018. You all remember that, don't you? That was uh, pretty amazing. Um, and, uh, and so those two lows in here are the next two fastest round trips uh, on the VIX. So this is going to be really... Interesting to see where this goes. This has been the most extreme spike, the most extreme example of, uh, you know, spiking higher and returning back down to uh, the, uh, the average levels. OK, so that's what's going on there. I mean, what does it portend? I mean, who knows? Except where are we right now? The markets have calmed down, back to having no fear at the moment. We'll see. Um, let's take a look at the three biggest movers. Let me just show you. OK, so here's a part of my ETF dashboard that I go through with my members every weekend. And you can see this week of these 16 sectors I talk about, there were 16 up and zero down. For the year, we have now reached 16 up and zero down. We've kind of been hanging with one or two in the red all year long at a minimum. And now we've gone to where they're all positive, which is a pretty dramatic move in here. Uh, so the biggest movers that we had when we look at both the industry sectors and then look down here at the index ETFs, semiconductors, followed by XLK, followed by the Qs. And then you could see a couple of the other sectors that were pretty standout performers, retail, consumer discretionary, some pretty big bounces that occurred. So let's take a look at semiconductors. OK, SMH was up 34 cents on Friday. So very, very strong move. This looks almost identical to the way NDX look, move, uh, looked, right? And it was up $21.86 for the week and closing back above the 10-week moving average. And no, it did not take out that uh, April low, although it got very, very close. So this is going to be really interesting. You got to sit back and say, well, the you know the alleyway picture is pretty close to being a, the same as what we're seeing on the on the uh, NDX, um, and uh, we'll take a look at the Qs in a minute. But very, very similar. Let's take a look at XLK. Of course, SMH is really kind of a subset of XLK. 
Now, the interesting thing about XLK is it did slightly break the April low in here. So it does to me, it didn't close below it, of course, but it does kind of put a question mark in my mind that, okay, the little bit more damage was done here, a little bit stronger overall move to the downside. Is it going to turn into something like this? Like we had a pivot point here, we take it out, and it means what, four more weeks of, you know, chopping around a little bit and actually chopping lower. I mean, we'll see what uh, what happens in here. We've had one heck of a bounce. Um, so, you know, this this does give you pause a little, and then we'll just see what happens with the wave count that occurs back over here on XLK. So watching the volume, you know, kind of kind of dropping off a little bit in here, as you'd kind of expect. Well, we'll see. And then uh, let's take a look at the queues. Let's go back up to the queues. So this is the same as 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 uh, NDX, and uh, this was up 61 cents on Friday, up 5.4 percent for the uh, for the week. Did I did I show those others? Well, I didn't show it. <laughs> XLK up 7.7 percent. SMH up 9.7 percent. Oh, I, I showed it on the ETF dashboard. That's right. So you saw it on the ETF dashboard, but I knew I put it on the, on the chart and I was like, wait a minute. Anyway, all right, let's go back to the queues. And so here's 5.4 percent for the move for the week. And then when we look at the LA Wave picture, it's the same kind of thing. It's the same thing that we're looking at. You know, are we getting a Wave 4 or is Wave 4 already done? It's pretty shallow. I mean, if you think about, if we were to put it right here and say, okay, what did wave four retrace of wave three? Let's do four versus three. Very, very shallow. So even if I take it off a semi log, yeah, it's a little deeper, not quite 38% that I'm looking for. So I guess I'm still. I'm still looking at this with a little bit of a question mark to say, well, uh, for the guideline of alternation, sharp wave two, sideways for wave four, we'll see if it plays out. Okay, that is it for this weekend. We'll see what kind of fall through we get next weekend. If you felt like the video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber to this channel, hit that little subscriber button. And if you'd like more of this information, head on over to joehenches.net. Check out the website and the membership. Everyone have a great week. We'll talk to you on the next video.